Hello everybody and welcome back to the Pokemon Let's Go Let's Play! Last time we made our way through Rock Tunnel and now we have arrived in Lavender Town and we saw our rival chase a Cubone into the tower, but before that, we're just going to explore the town for a quick bit and then we'll go to the other uh, tower. Ah, oh, good old Lavender Town. How was your feelings when you first arrived in Lavender Town back in the day? It's honestly been so long since I first played Pokemon Yellow, I can't quite remember my initial feelings about it. But I will say, it's probably one of... I might say it's one of my favourite towns in the game, just for the atmosphere. Mmm, easily. I feel like it's definitely one of the most iconic places in Pokemon. Definitely in the first generation. Yeah, I think that's because, like, up until this point, you know, the, the Pokemon experience has been so happy-go-lucky. Yeah, you encountered, like, criminals, but it's all been like, ah, oh, but we can beat them, we have Pokemon and all that stuff, and then you get to Lavender Town, and then it's, the game just goes, oh, by the way, Pokemon do die. They can die, you know. And there's ghosts. Not just ghost Pokemon, just ghosts in general. It's like, oh. <laughs> oh, no. Hang on a second, can I get an Alolan Diglett from this woman? Oh, my God, I can! Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not going to. No. <laughs> Well, we don't need it. It's not like I'm going to use it. I wonder what other Alolan ones we can get. Fruit. Fruit, you okay, Fruit? Buddy? <laughs> Why can't I stop rolling? Okay, you know what, Fruit? Like, you're getting stuck on everything. Let's, uh... <laughs> Let's maybe swap over. Yeah, let's get Pat out. Considering what we're probably going to be running into in Lavender, in, uh, Lavender Tower, let's uh, switch up who's up front. Oh, poor Shield is not going to have a good day with this one. <laughs> People remember, fighting doesn't affect ghosts. Yeah, sorry Shield, you're going to have to uh, stay in the back again. What? But why? Because you can't do much. <laughs> I just love the colour palette for this town as well. Like, I remember back in, I think it was in yellow for the Game Boy Colour, this town was like a more purplish black, and now they've kept the colour scheme for the actual, for the Let's Play, for this version, which is great. Yeah, it, it wouldn't quite work if they suddenly made Lavender Town green or something. I mean, it's got green everything else. Can you imagine if these people were just like, every time someone opens a door, they start flinching and oh god, another guy. Oh, it's just a person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honestly shocked anyone would even want to live here. I suppose there's, like, um, looking after the tower and everything. There's got to be some people who live here. I guess. Also, have you noticed so far that, like, we've had, like, some of the NPCs talk about how, uh, you know, it's there's memorial services for Pokemon. And that maybe the ghosts in the tower are Pokemon that were kidnapped by Team Rocket and never see again. No one's saying die. Hmm. We can't say the D word. Ah, uh, they kept they kept the white hand. Yay! Uh, yeah, it's like what happens to the Pokemon? Oh, they clearly get sent to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> uh, let's go, Pikachu, being done by. <laughs> Four kids. I mean, Pokemon was originally dubbed by four kids before they lost the license and uh, shut down. That is true. When did they shut down, actually? That's a good question. Uh, I can't remember. We've got so much to sell. That's something I actually wonder, like, when we get into the town, we see our first ghosts, I wonder how the ghosts are actually going to look, because we still haven't got the Sylph scope. Ah, oh, that's right, we can't clear Lavender Tower yet. Yeah, because for those who don't remember in the original game, in the original game, once you got to Lavender Town and you got to the tower, you couldn't fight any of the ghosts, because they, they don't have a corporeal form, so they just look like these... Don't know how to describe it. I think the best way to describe it is a, a ghost diglet with hands. Is the best way I describe it. Well, the game's encouraging us to go in there now, so we may as well. Oh, yeah. 
I think it's we gotta get up to the the ghost of the Marowak mother. Yeah, oh, spoilers. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Do you remember the Pokemon Origins episodes all about uh, Lavender Town? Vaguely. Because, uh, once again, I'm going to bring up Swade's Pokemon Journey because he uh, covered uh, the Pokemon Origins uh, for you know because of um, his patrons uh, met a certain amount. And funny enough, re like I liked it when I first watched it, but then I I watched this recap done by Swade. It's honestly pretty weak. How so? Well, it definitely didn't have the same budget as the first and last episodes did. I think that was a problem with just Origins in general. Like, the middle stuff all just did not have... It didn't have the budget, and it didn't have the amount of episodes needed to cover everything that happened in Gen 1. Yeah, plus, like, it just didn't cover the events, like, the the, the events of the tower very well. I think, I think like, my favourite bit, as Wade points out, was at one point, one of the Team Rocket grunts is like, Hey, have have you heard? There's apparently actual ghosts in this tower. Well, I heard that was just a rumor. Apparently, it's not. Whoa, really? <laughs> Fantastic. They do that thing where they're like, "Oh, Cubone lost its mother." They won't. They don't say the mother died. Well, no, it's very clear the mother did die in that little. <laughs> You see her ghost, and yet the the shows are like, ah, oh, the, the mother's not here anymore. Just say it's dead. But the children, the children have seen worse. You've made this for, like, an, an audience that has grown up playing the original games. So kids can take death. They're not... It's like, hello, Bambi. Can you imagine? Your mother can't be with you anymore, Bambi. She was sent to the Shadow Realm. Shadow Realm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cadres, we are in a tower that was designed for burying Pokemon. I don't think being in a good mood is an appropriate response. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that, but like, wow, Cadres, I've learned so much about you. Necessary for the better, either. Yeah, but apparently we got like a, a new outfit, so I'm gonna assume it's like proper formal wear. Yeah, let's res let's res <laughs> be respectful. I don't think running around as like a peak dressed as a Pikachu would be appropriate. <laughs> yeah, this works. Does Cadbury's get formal wear? Oh my god, he did! Oh my. I am gonna be honest, I am tempted to leave us like that. We look styling. I'm gonna be honest, I, I, I second that. <laughs> oh, there we go. They said the D word. It's right there. This one NPC has it. She acknowledges it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot we have channelers and psychics. Not just psychic Pokemon people are like, I am a psychic. Yeah, people peop there are people with legit psychic powers in this world. Okay, let's go through the purple haze. Hey, let's take all these offerings that were clearly left for these graves. <laughs> well, they're not gonna be using them. I was about to I was about to say that for all, but I might be going too far right now. <laughs> they don't need them anymore. Wow, our trainer's kind of a dick. <laughs> he has no respect for the dead. He's breaking the Geneva Conventions. <laughs> have you seen that Twitter account that's like, can you, yes, break, I the have. <laughs> can you break the Geneva Conventions in this game? You can even do it in Animal Crossing. Wrecked barriers right around them. Also, our second die. <laughs> well played, Pokemon Let's Go. You actually acknowledge death. Well, that shut us up then. Also, I love the fact he's actually like, wait, did, you, did one of your Pokemon die? Is that why you're here? It's like, no. Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. Let's have a battle in the middle of this <laughs> sacred burial ground. <laughs> you know, like, at least Gary had the excuse of being a dick. You're supposed to be the nice rival. 
At least we haven't got stuff like Charizard or Dragonite using Hyper Beam in here. Yeah. God, the amount of damage we'd have to pay massive amounts of Poke Dollars. Ugh. Again, breaking the Geneva Conventions. I need to show you some of um, uh, Polygon's Unraveled videos. They're amazing. And like in, in one of them, like uh, Brian David Gilbert, that's his name. He comes to the conclusion that Mario is a war criminal. <laughs> <laughs> like a, it, I mean, a, he does... Sorry, it's just that throughout the uh, games, he has apparently broken the Geneva Conventions multiple times. I mean, I can see that. I may as well bring it up because it's pretty infamous uh, in this game. Do you believe that Gary's Raticate died? Honestly, no. I feel like that's something that people brought up because it was like at a perfect point, but probably just gave it back to the professor. Like sent to the sent to the um to the PC like we do all the time or used to do in that case. That probably is what happened. I personally like to believe that his Raticate did die. Or at the very least, I think they should actually have made that canon. In like some form of a uh, media. Maybe not in the actual anime that we got. But if they fleshed out Pokemon Origins as a full like 22 episode old series or something, I reckon they could have had it so that... Uh, or hell, they could have even just put it in Origins. Like, have Blue in that, I guess. Have his Raticate actually have died or something. Maybe that's why he's at the tower. Uh, at the very least, I think it would have added add a lot to his character. Yeah, I guess. Like, they could really have gone with that. Like, him like coming into his grief of losing one of his Pokemon. I feel like Pokemon's not going in that going for that direction it's weird because a part of me like does agree that pokemon doesn't need to be adult and dark to be enjoyable because at the end of the day it's for children at the same time though i like it when it does and i always wish it kind of did it a bit more it's why i love uh, sun and moon's plot so much because by the end it's like jesus god especially with lucid me that's what i mean it's like sun and sun and moon had an abusive parent and then Ultra Sun and Moon tried to change that. Oh, don't you start with me on Ultra Sun and Moon. Oh. It's okay, we're going to retcon this. No, don't. That was... <laughs> that was really well handled in the original. Let's completely undermine, like, Lusamine's arc in that game. It's like, oh, really? Okay. Uh. Anyway, did, did you notice, James? What, what did I miss? He's evolved his Eevee. Oh, yeah. Okay, he has. Called it. And of course, it's a Jolteon. Oh, God, what have I done? What have I done? I mean, this isn't going to do much. I just made Fruit dig in a burial <laughs> ground. <Tower. laughs> you just hear Fruit screaming. <gasps> What have you done, Michael? What have you done? He pops out like, Fruit, are you okay? I saw them. The bodies. There was nothing <laughs> left of that Psyduck. <laughs> oh, oh, nothing no. but flesh. <laughs> Vacant stairs. Cold, rotten flesh. And I swear one of them whispered to me. <laughs> God. Okay, here's one for you, James. Do you believe in the theory that Cubones are just baby Kangaskhans? The possibility, but... I personally don't buy it because I don't understand how, like, a, sep a separate species of Pokémon can then become an entirely different Pokemon just by putting on a skull. I mean, to be fair, the evolution process of Pokemon is a, is pretty bullshit. Oh yeah, in retrospect, evolution's wonky as hell. Like, it is... If you try to make sense of Pokemon evolution, just don't bother, don't try. <laughs> it's like, okay, this Pokemon evolved by just giving it a metal coat. Okay. 
Yeah, that still doesn't make sense to me. Oh, by giving this Pokemon to another person, they get stronger. Well, hang on then, I want him back! <laughs> oh no, but you can't take backsies. Then what was the point? Oh, this poor Ace Trainer, they're like, okay, you go to the Pokemon Tower, but it's scary! Perfect. <laughs> You'll learn much. Sorry, Coach Trainer. Really? Not even like a ghost type? Just a normal Geo dude. Hang on a second, your Geo is level 28 and you didn't evolve it into a Graveler? Let us show how much of a folly they've made. I mean, to be fair, even if it was a Graveler, it probably wouldn't stand up to melt for very long. True. Matt, Melt's dodging everything! What's going on? <laughs> Melt is just like, nope, 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 nope. I think it's because, like, the last couple of episodes, Melt's had a rough time, and this is, like, the moment where Melt's like, no, it's my turn. Melt's a ninja now. <laughs> well, it's like, have you noticed that in um, Smash Bros. Ultimate, uh, Squirtle's running animation looks like the Naruto run? Yes, <laughs> it's glorious. The fucker Pikachu candies. <laughs> Hang on, I, I gotta look. I gotta look at these. Are these just rare candies? We're given a different name. Yeah, is it? Are they specifically for Pikachu? Oh no, they just increase all stats by one. Oh. Oh, but wait, no. I I have to give it to Pikachu. That might be a way of like you know how in some Pokemon games you get an item that makes Pikachu stronger, so you don't have to evolve it. Ah, uh, okay. I feel like that might be what this game's trying to do. Yeah, may maybe it's there actually to. Uh... Because I remember when I played Pokemon Yellow, like, obviously, I kept Pikachu with me to the very end, but the fact I couldn't evolve it into a Raichu was a handicap, and there was nothing that the game offers that could, like, you know, help make up for that short sight. I think it wasn't until Pokemon X and Y, I believe, where we finally got... where we finally got the item that made Pikachu base form stronger, and oh, yep... <laughs> Yep, they've done it. I'm sorry, but that's not scary. That's a, <laughs> that's adorable. I want five of them. No, he just wants a hug. <laughs> oh. Get out. Be gone. Be gone. It's supposed to be scary. I'm just there like, ah, oh, bless. See, even this baby isn't afraid of it. What's I find interesting, it's almost like once the Pokemon dies, it learns English. Yeah, what's that all about? <laughs> Us, yes, Pikachu, that's the appropriate response. <laughs> you made Pikachu sad. Oh, God. oh okay, now that's scary. Oh. <laughs> What were you saying? <laughs> Did you see Pad's got stuck? He's like, well, Michael, don't leave me! <laughs> don't you leave me here! Okay, I feel like maybe we can then come back later. I was really I was really expecting this part was gonna be us going up the tower, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. Yeah, I think it's I think it's because we forgot about the uh, the Sylph scope. We now need to go to uh S Cerudian or not Cerulean, it's... Uh, Celadon. Celadon, that's it. Also, yeah, we didn't have to climb the tower just yet, because look, guys, they're back! It's the team. Now, we haven't we haven't seen them since Mount Moon. I'm kind of shocked. I'm pretty sure that was like that in the original as well. But we didn't get to see him half as much as the original anime. <laughs> Although, to be fair, if it was like the original anime, we would, we would see them every single town. Yeah. <laughs> bugger it, they'd end up in one of the fights. Oh, this is new. Are they going to take the Cubone? I'm really liking these additions to the original Gen 1 plot. Because now they're giving you another reason to head to Celadon. I suppose it's also it's a way of like going, hey guys, you need to go to Celadon next. When back in Yellow, when we were kids, it's like, where do we go now? Yeah, it was very vague back then here. It's making it much clearer where you need to go. But incorporate into the story, which is good. Oh, but Cubone's happy with them. 
Well, no, it's because they tricked it into thinking that it's Mums and Celadon. True. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> That'd be fucked up if it's like... <laughs> Can you imagine by the end of it? Cubone, don't you see? Your mother's actually a ghost in Lavender Town, like Team Rocket tricked you. Oh yeah, I know. Wait, you know? Yeah, I found out earlier, and I actually quite like being a bad guy. <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome Pokemon Edition. Well, if you think about it, like, even in the original anime, like, all of Team Rocket's Pokemon mostly joined willingly, and oh, yeah. do actually enjoy working with them. Because they were actually nice to their Pokemon most of the time. Because if you've, it's been pointed out, James never caught any of his Pokemon. They all chose to go with him. Like he was, he was just nice to them, and they were like, "Oh, I'm gonna stick around." I do remember uh, Jesse in the Hoenn series beating the shit out of a Zaviper and cratching it, like with her bare hands. It wasn't like. She didn't like set another Pokemon because, like, by that point, she had no Pokemon. She just released Arbok, and she just beat up this Surviper and made it hers. <laughs> You're mine now. <laughs> okay, watch this. Clefairy's gonna do Draco Meteor now or some shit. Oh, it's just Whirlwind. Ah! Woo! Woo! Cue in the goofy holler. <laughs> I might edit that in now. <laughs> <laughs> Just faintly. Oh crap, that's right, Dragon doesn't affect Fairy! Oh crap, it doesn't! I completely forgot about that. To be fair, I forgot that too, so don't worry. I always feel like an idiot whenever I forget stuff like that. That happened to me in um, Sword and Shield when I was fighting uh, Rayhan during like the League battles. Like, he he Gigantamaxed his uh, Derulodon, is it called? Yeah. Like the big steel tower dragon thing. So I Dynamaxed my uh, Hatterain because, hey, it's Fairy, Fairy beats Dragon. Completely forgetting that Darulodon was... Steel. Yeah, it was Steel, which Fairy is weak to. I think I pulled that exact same manoeuvre as well in, one of the, in the fights. I can't remember which one. I felt so stupid. To be fair, we all have brain fart moments like that. I feel like it's going to happen in one of these episodes. You you chose to battle me! What did you think was gonna happen? Be so mean to my Clefairy. It's not our fault you fought us. You don't want your Clefairy to get hurt. Don't set it out in battles. We never asked for this. Oh, okay, I see what's going on here. So we can either take the long way around and battle the trainers, or we can go take the shortcut and encounter some wild Pokemon. Oh wait, no. No, I was wrong. There's Oh. Oh, there's the wild Pokemon. There's a, is that a, yeah, there's a Jigglypuff walking around. Yeah. We got a Firestone. If I'm, we're probably never going to need it. May as well battle you. Unless we uh, use our, our uh, Growlithe. I don't think that's going to happen, mate. True. <laughs> we're sticking with Charmeleon. We can do it for completionist's sake. Actually, I may as well say it, because I looked it up a bit. Uh, we probably won't be battling Red in uh, this playthrough. Ah, uh, how come? Because his party's at level 80. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't have the patience. <laughs> Unless we got a montage. Gonna need a montage. Yeah, maybe I'll grind in my spare time and I'll make like a bonus video where we battle Red. I will laugh so hard if we don't. We, cr we crank up all the levels, get to 80, and we just wipe out his team really easily. Oh, that'd be so lame. Like, oh. Well, that was easy. <laughs> okay, I think Melt may have met his match. Melt's like, I didn't hear no bell. No, Melt, get out here. No! Oh, God, there's two of them. We have two Vegetas. <laughs> Man, that Kadabra hits hard. Yeah. Fortunately, Cabri's is faster. You may be stronger, but I'm faster. I am low-key dreading when we go eventually reach Sabrina, because she was always the hardest gym leader. Oh yeah. Because in the I don't know if you kids remember this, back in the old days, psychic types were busted. Cause there wasn't special attack and special defense, it was just special. And it made them 
really tough. Also, I didn't mean to keep Cadbury's in. Oh, well, I'm committed now. Oh, no. I got cocky. Oh, shit. Cadbury's, no. Oh, God. Cadbury's, no. Wait a second. Cadbury doesn't faint. He just runs away. <laughs> He's going to be really sad now. Yeah. It's like we don't have anything to fight against. Yeah, I mentioned this in the last part. Like, we don't really have a good counter for fighting type. Unless Charmeleon learns a flying type move when he evolves. Or we can learn fly. Which, to be fair, is a H... Is fly and surf were always the two HM type moves I always use. That's because they were the only good ones. Yeah, they're the only ones worth a damn. Especially fly. Like, the problem with all the other HMs was that as battle moves, they were just really useless. Especially by, you know, the end of the game. Like, who's using Cut against the Elite Four? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, let's say that Waterfall was quite handy at times. Yeah, all right. And Whirlpool, actually. Whirlpool, yeah. <laughs> oh, and Dive. Dive was pretty good. Dive was good. Okay, so more than two. There were more than two good ones. To be fair, that's only because those ones were added in other versions and replaced stuff like Flash and everything. Yeah. Oh, thank God Flash never came back after Gen 1. At least not as an, H not, not as an HM, I mean. Did, wasn't it HM in 2? Uh, Gen 2? I honestly can't remember. It may have been, actually. Let me have a look. It was a HM from 1 to 3. Oh god, it was still in 3? Yeah. <laughs> no one ever wanted to use it, but it was there. Hey Cadbury's, I know you're unconscious, but cut down this bush for me, thanks. <laughs> that was always, I mean, because one of the benefits to HMs was that they could be used even if the Pokemon in question had fainted, which was good. It doesn't make sense logically. Like, if they're unconscious, how can they move this boulder? No, my favourite one is when they try and fly. Yeah, it's like, but you, you're unconscious, how are you doing this? Thing is, though, if you couldn't use them while they were unconscious, we would riot. We'd riot and would also be stuck. <laughs> there, were, there would be moments where it's like, okay, I literally cannot leave. I've broken the game. Yeah. Just speaking of um, Pokemon trying to use fly, it's like that... What's the, uh, the villain from Persona 3, his persona? Uh, oh, my mind's gone blank. It's that persona that's basically that looks like just this person hanging there with wings. Oh, I know which one. Uh, Hypnos, I think its name is. Yeah, that's what I imagine <laughs> the flying Pokemon are using when they're trying to fly but unconscious. <laughs> just like... Pfft. It's okay, it's just a coffin. I'm not really sure how to feel about coughing as a design. I feel like I should not like it, but I don't know. I kind of don't not like it, if that makes sense. <laughs> I've, always, I've always liked coughing, but that might also be because of Team Rocket. Yeah, I think that might be the reason. It's just out of association. I definitely love um, Sword and Shield's wheezing. Oh, everyone loves Sword and Shield's wheezing. Like... Stove pipe pap that's literally a stove. It gets a top hat and a mustache. Kind of all it needed. And weirdly part fairy type. Yeah, well, they had to make it do. It would it would be really lame if it was like, here's the new wheezing. Oh, wow, what type is it? Poison. That's just like the regular wheezing. I can't remember. The new slowpoke. Is that exactly the same as the original? We don't know. I, I don't think... <laughs> wait, no. I think it's... No, it's pure psychic now. Ah, right. Like, it lost the water typing, but we don't... Uh, we don't know what Slow Bro and Slow King are going to be like. So, in a way, it's kind of made itself weaker, because it's not the dual typing. 
Well, I'm sure hopefully we'll get some benefit when it evolves. Hopefully, I do hope it's not just pure psychic uh, when it evolves. And I just noticed the level on that Seeking, and oh dear. Oh dear. Level 35. It's fine. You know what, Michael? It's fine. He's only got one. He's only got one Pokemon. Oh no. Oh shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. Pat, no. Oh wow. That was legit some anime bullshit right there. Because the attack <laughs> connected and my health didn't budge. And I'm like, wait, did it not work? And then it just died. <laughs> You are already dead. Nani? <laughs> I noticed because like this this uh character type is called like gamer. And it doesn't really look like a gamer, at least not how we perceive them like nowadays. And oh god. Um please stop hitting me with oh, horn drill. God. Oh god, we're losing! Shield? <laughs> <laughs> okay, shield does Thunderbolt. <laughs> yeah, but is it even going to be fast enough? I mean, did you paralyze? Yeah, you paralyzed it, so it should be able to get the first hit in. That did bugger all. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, now you start missing with Horn Drill. Revive the rest of our team. <laughs> no, Shield's got this. I believe in him. <laughs> okay, I'll save my thoughts on the gamer after we take out this bloody seeking. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, now it's missing, because Horn Drill doesn't have that high... Because it's a one-hit KO move, it doesn't have as high accuracy. So the fact that it hit twice in a row was very concerning. Utter bullshit, you mean. We're on tender hooks now, going, oh god, it's using Hondra again. It keeps spamming it. <laughs> Come on, Shield, you can do this. It's like me when I play Smash Brothers. Ha! Yes! Wait, what that was That was literally its only move! Hondra was all it knew! Wow. <laughs> oh Shield, please evolve. Please evolve. <laughs> this would be perfect. <laughs> Oh, that's... wow. If it died to struggle, I would have been so mad. <laughs> so there really was just a war of attrition. Yeah. I would have won no matter what happened. Ah, oh, it didn't evolve. Okay, next time. Boo. Okay, let's go. I'm going back to the Pokemon Center. Uh, Future me, cut here, please. Okay, we're back. Right, <laughs> so... So what were you saying about Gamer? <laughs> yeah, because, okay, so I'll just go quickly go back. So this character type, this uh, trainer type is classified as a Gamer. But he doesn't really look like how we perceive what a Gamer would be, does he? No. Well, that's because he's not. Because if you remember, James, these trainer types in the original game were Gamblers. Gamblers. Oh, is, is it because of, um, like ESRB in the rating system, we can't call them Gamblers and everything? I would not be surprised. It's like, really? Like, actual gambling? Yeah, I agree. Get rid of that shit from my game. But just having mention of gamblers? I mean, that happens in real life, guys. But if the children hear the word gambler, then they'll start gambling. No. That's, that's how it works, James. That's how it works. It's a slippery slope, my friend. It's a slippery slope. First they'll hear the mention and then they'll become gamblers overnight. Meanwhile, you get games actually designed for children with microtransactions in them, but that's okay, apparently. Oh no, as long as they mention it's got it. Which they don't. Then it's all perfectly fine. I'm still bitter at Crash Team bloody racing pulling that shit. Oh, it's the reason why I stopped playing it. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, this is not, no, no. Okay, just for the audience, if you don't know what we mean, when Crash Team Racing first launched, it had no microtransaction. And Activision even said they had no intention of adding them. And then about like a month later, they added them. Yep. Because Activision. And it's a game that's clearly aimed at a very young audience. 
You know, I, d I don't like being the whole clutching the pearls and going, oh, but think of the children. But that is a legit mo. That is like a legit cause for it. I feel like in this situation, that's justified. <laughs> like, no, think of the children. That you're actively teaching them gambling. Ugh. No. Ugh, let's just move on from that. <laughs> At least this Pokemon game doesn't have any of that. Yeah, I love I love the fact, by the way, that this dude was all like, you need a strategy to win this, and then all I did was just throw rocks at him. <laughs> it was a big rock. We already did that joke in the last part. <laughs> <laughs> I look nervously at my notes. I don't have any more jokes. Okay, I'm, I'm terrified about what this guy's got. <laughs> I want to play a game. All right, Jigsaw. Okay, Stan, what have you got? Oh, no. No, it's okay. We're sending out our war turtle. No, but... Oh, he's going to use horn drill again, isn't he? He's going to use bloody horn drill. Are you the last guy's brother? <laughs> I'll be honest, I would have used Scold straight away. <laughs> Just don't kill it, kill he it. He has yep. got the same strategy. What the hell, Game Freak? <laughs> you cheating motherfuckers. Oh, yeah, you were right. I should have just used school first. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's dead now. Oh, God. I like to call this route Cheetah's Alley. Yeah, me too. Because fuck these two. I mean, yes, we would like to try. Because we want the experience. We're showing off our Pokemon. By the way, does this one, does this girl look exactly like me or is it just me? No, that you do look exactly the same. Like you're even wearing the exact same clothes. Huh, weird. And we use the exact same Pikachu as you. Oh no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Melt. <laughs> ah, fruit can deal with it. I know I know you're in a rough spot, fruit, but I think you can take at least one Thundershock. There we go. Oh thank god, just using light screen. Now as long as this thing doesn't know any fighting type moves, we should be okay. Uses strength. Ah, shit. <laughs> no, strength wouldn't do much because it's a normal set. It'd be worrying if it used surf. <laughs> it's like, ah, fuck. <laughs> or if it was a Pikachu Libre, because then it would know flying press. Oh, god, yeah. Man, Pikachu, Li Pikachu Libre is awesome. So, I believe they put so much effort into all the different Pikachus. Yeah, those costumes were kind of cute. Again, another gimmick that Game Freak never brought back. Yeah. It's like, why don't we just work on it and, ex and make it better? Nah, let's just drop it after one game. Oh. Oh gee, I wonder what Pokemon she will use. I'm gonna say a Gyarados. My bet's on a Magmar. Oh, it's a Meowth! Oh, that was going to be my second guess. <laughs> I mean, after the two cheating brothers earlier, I feel like this is so easy. <laughs> See, what would be really cool, if this came out after Sword and Shield, her three Pokemon could be a regular Meowth, and a Lolan Meowth, and a Galarian Meowth. Ooh, yeah, that'd be cool. What do you think of Trash Goblin Meowth? Are we, are we talking about Galar Meowth? Yeah. I love it. It's, it's, I, me calling it trash gobbling is a term of endearment because it is it's so ridiculous, it's great. Like, it's a steel viking cat. Like, that's cool. It literally turns into a perserker. I love its big bushy beard. A great big bushy beard! Exactly. I never actually evolved mine into a perserker because, uh... Because it was a mainstay of my team for a while, but then I swapped it out and just never brought it back. Yeah, I sadly didn't use one in mine either. I think the only ones that, like, um, 
ones I used was uh, the new Farfetch to Surfetched and a uh, Ponyta to Rapidash. Which that Rapidash is really good when you're doing um, two on twos. Just heal your team up. <laughs> now, what did you think of Alola Meowth? I like Alola Meowth. Not much of a fan of Alolan Persian. I like Alolan Persian because the design is so dumb. <laughs> it's like, Dum. well, it's not. It's not that I don't think the design is dumb. I don't think it's necessarily bad design. I just think it just wasn't what people expected. Yeah, because Persian's a very refined creature. And then we get that. <laughs> it's big round football face. It's like, mm, hello. <laughs> I still need to find that comic about the the normal Meowth and the Lola Meowth, and then <laughs> them growing up. <laughs> and it's like, and then like the normal Persians like has a family, is like trying, it's like very clearly not happy. And then this, the Alola Meowth just like, I said, what about my rights? It's like, oh god, <laughs> instead of <laughs> a men's rights activist. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, what have you got? I do not like that expression. I don't like that Magnemite. Especially when we have our Melt out. I should really swap Melt out of the front at some point. Especially because we're going to Celadon, which is Grass type. Good point! And we still don't have a good Fire type move. Although, I just bought. What? Um, Celadon Mall, because they sell TMs. Ah, uh, yeah, we might be able to find some stuff there. Yeah, so we might be able to find a decent fire move. Because I'm not going to lie, Trogdor is currently the weakest of the three. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he's got Dragon Rage, which is something, and oh dear. Shield, no! God, I'm just... Honestly, like, this is my fault. I keep sending Shield out against Pokemon way tougher than it is. Shield's trying, damn it. We say this every time, is that Shield's strong, he just can't take a hit. So what was, when we saw the defense, like the defense is just stupidly weak. Yeah, and here's the thing though, that was, that was like taking into account his special defense when he was going up against that Thunderbolt. Apparently even that's not all that great. Our shield is literally a glass cannon. Hopefully Celadon Mall has those stat boosting items. I'm just going to find a whole bunch of whatever boosts defense and just shove it down Shield's throat. <laughs> I think you mean nose. Oh, wait a second. If I'm remembering correctly. Oh, we're going to get something. No, that's right. Because this is the way to Celadon. But we can't go this way because the guard is thirsty. Oh. Any particular reason why you can't let me pass, sir? You want to give me a reason? Yeah, you're, you're very thirsty. You wish you had some tea. And you can't let me pass. Why? Oh! The, yeah, because it, it's basically the game where you're saying, yeah, you can't go to Sabrina's town yet. Oh, that's right. We've got to go through Saffron to get yeah. to Celadon. Because, like, Saffron's in the middle and Lamadon and Celadon on either side. Yeah, I get that. But, like, what's the in-universe justification for why I can't go through? I'll tell you, this dude's just a dick. Yeah, you are a bad guy. He won't even give me a reason. He's just like, no, I can't let you through. Do you want to explain why? No. I'm thirsty. It's essentially his reasoning. Remember, kids, never question the government. <laughs> huh. Bad morals. I'd laugh so hard that this person would heal your team up. I would have just gone, I would have been so mad. <laughs> I mean, at least we have this underground tunnel. With nothing in it. Oh, aside from this. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there is nothing in here. <laughs> oh, yay. Pointless items. They don't even sell well either. This music does not fit this tunnel. Stop giving me these X items. I'm never going to use them. But there'll be people in the comments going, Oh, I think you'll find that X defense and X attack are really useful in this scenario. It's like, no, they're not. They have never been useful. You should go to the shop. Why? They sell things. Thanks. 
Where were you at the beginning of the game? It's okay, we're now here. Uh, three? Why? Oh, sorry, I, I, I just now was going into a battle. Won't even answer my question. That shut us up, I guess. Do you remember back in... In the original anime, there was a guy, he lost his gym badges to Team Rocket. He got them back at the end. And they were all different gyms. And it's like, which gyms did this guy go to? I do remember that. Do you want to know what I don't remember? Swapping War Turtle out! <laughs> <laughs> Literally said in the last battle, I should swap Melt out. And then I didn't do that. And now look, we're up against the Raichu. Why is everyone using electric types? Hey, it gives fruit more things to kill. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, well, actually, going off of like what you brought up, I remember like Gary, when he showed up to battle uh, the Viridian Gym, he had like 12 badges or something, and a bunch of them were yeah. from Kanto. It's like, where did you get those? What do you mean there are other gyms? It just raises too many questions. I might be misremembering, but wasn't there a case that there's, there's been some place that used to be gyms, but they got their stuff taken away? Uh, I don't think so. You might be thinking of that one town where you had, like, two different y gang groups that were trying to become official gyms. That's it, yeah. Yeah, they were, they, they were basically, like, just straight-up street gangs. Both were trying to become official gyms, and then Nurse Joy came along and said, No. It was West Side Story, Pokemon Edition. Exactly. The Cypher's gonna rumble tonight. Really? Razor Leaf at, like, level 31? Seems a wow, bit... Wow, that's... <laughs> Thought we would have learnt this earlier, but whatever. I mean, not complaining. I'd probably get rid of takedown. Yeah, see, takedown's stronger, but I never, I've never liked the idea of a flinch, uh, well, not flinch, but like moves that deal damage to to my Pokemon as well. I'm like that with any RPG. If there's ever a move that's like this move is really strong, but it does damage to you, I never use it. Same. And before I get any smart asses, know that I still play Persona. I know that in Persona there are <laughs> special moves that require you to use HP to use them. That's not what I mean. Even then, I mostly stick to magic attacks. Which is not great in the early game, because that's... It's also not great when, like, some of your party members have much better physical damage than magic. Ah, I just stick to the magic users. Like, if you're playing Persona 4 and, like, you're making Kanji forget all his physical attacks, like, what are you even doing? I don't want to be that guy who tells people how to play games, but you're just making the game harder for yourself. That's fine, I just don't use Kanji. Oh, <laughs> oh damn it! What's the it's the high end Daisy Persona Four comic, and then Kanji got a Persona. Hell yeah! Too bad you'll never use him in battle. Oh man! Oh, oh man! <laughs> to be fair, I don't make them forget their physical moves or anything. I still keep them. I just never use them. And this is like okay, this is definitely gonna hurt. Let's use it. How tough is this dog trio? Dogtrio just doesn't want to die. It also, like, nearly killed Melt. You know what? On the su Since, like, you know, Lavender Town's still fresh in the brain, going back to the whole Nuzlocke thing, have you ever read any Nuzlocke comics? No, I haven't. Like, I've read a, f I've read a few in my lifetime, and some of them are, like, pretty good, because there's always two different types of uh, Nuzlocke comics. And, oh dear, Pad's gone. Shit. How strong is this dog trio? <laughs> this dog trio just doesn't want to die. I'd say you shield, but I feel shield is not gonna win this. Hope as long as shield is faster, which he should be. Come on, shield! I believe in you. And he's not faster. Oh shit! <laughs> dog trio doesn't even have leg shield. <laughs> <laughs> What's your excuse? Okay, fruit. <laughs> Hopefully fruit's defences will keep it alive. 
Wait, no, fruit's part rock. That's weak to ground. No, he's Ooh. okay. He's okay. Oh. <laughs> Knock it out, fruit. Doug Trio's gone. It's just go get out of here. Little bastard. Christ. Oh. Oh god, it's still going. <laughs> yeah, he's got. No, it's okay. Cadbury's gonna handle the seal. Seal uses earthquake. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you dapper little Pikachu. Knock it out. <laughs> Aha, I knew it was worth setting up Stealth Rock. Oh, yeah, I was concerned for a second, but yeah, Cadbury's took it easy. <laughs> did you actually think it was going to use Earthquake? It's like, wait, what? <laughs> no, but I was worried Aqua Jet was going to do more damage than it actually did. Okay, got any more? No, it's just done. Lady, you were stronger than I thought. <laughs> Your Doug Trio is broken. Okay, I don't think there are any more trainers to worry about, so we can save using our healing items until we get to Celadon. It's got a load of uh, Pokemon running around. Wait, Pad, how are you here? I Didn't you fall unconscious? Glad you're having a nice time, Pad. Yeah, Pad, you're unconscious. You shouldn't be here. Okay, come on, Trogdor. You know, just, oh, okay, I guess I'll catch this Jigglypuff instead. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll get some experience, man, as well. At that point, we just like, you know what, sod it. <laughs> Going back to what I was saying earlier, there are two, there are two types of Nuzlocke comics released. Oh, I hate these controls! <laughs> <laughs> are you okay there, Michael? No, so... Anyway, there are two types of Nuzlocke comics from what I can tell. You've got ones that are actually very serious, uh, story-driven adventures, and then you've got the ones that are just parodies, where it's like... This is a Nuzlocke parody. <laughs> it's, it's just like, okay, like they wanted to make a comic, and they're mostly prioritising on just like jokes and stuff, and that, like, oh, it's, and someone dies, like it's not treated as like a big deal, it's just an, ah. Oh. Honestly, I prefer the former. I liked it whenever I'd read ones where, like, uh, the artists were actively trying to make some kind of narrative going there, and they'd, like, give, like, new personalities to some of the characters. Some of them would, like, uh, have it established so that... I remember reading one where in this... It was, like, a black and white Nuzlocke. And in this uh, version of the Pokemon universe, Pokemon deaths were very frequent. So it was sort of like, if you're signing up to be a Pokemon trainer, you are basically say, ready to risk your Pokemon's lives. Oh. In fact, I, I will never forget this. There was, in this exact comic, uh, they had a scene where Bianca got into like a gym battle and she sent out her mana. You remember mana, right? The little floating pink thing. And like, she ordered this mana to attack and the mana refused. The mana just ignored her orders and it's heavily implied that this mana was trying to get itself killed. Jesus. <laughs> it was fucked up. That's a bit too dark, I feel, for Pokemon. <laughs> well, that's how these Nuzlocke's go, because since they've got, like, Pokemon actually dying, they decide to take a much uh, darker atmosphere. And sometimes it works, sometimes it gets a little bit try-hard when there's straight-up blood and everything. I'm a little bit like, okay. It's like, okay, this wasn't necessary. Now we have the Earthquake. <laughs> now we can destroy everyone. I feel like Earthquake's one of those moves that everyone's like, yes, please, please learn it. <laughs> and then give loads of PP ups, and it's like, ah, oh, I can use it multiple times. I did not know the Raticates could swim. Yeah. Ugh, now just imagine loads of Raticates swimming towards you. And let's get another one. Get the combo going. Another! <laughs> Then we find one that's just shiny. Oh, Kakor, can you imagine? <laughs> and we'll never use it. <laughs> exactly. It's 
like me with my one ever shiny I caught in the wild, barring the Gyarados. Yeah. It was the Zigzagoon. Oh yeah, you told me, yeah. Did you ever catch a shiny in the wild? Uh, shiny Sneasel. I mentioned this in a previous part, I remember. I mean, Sneasel's good. <laughs> yeah, but I just never used it. <laughs> <laughs> But it's shiny up, but I don't want to use it. Okay. I'm going to come back for you. Oh, I think he's one of those, like, um, you use only one Pokemon against him. He's one of those trainers. Yeah, but let's let's heal up first, because Pokemon Center is right here. And then we'll go do that. I swear, yep. Yeah, I swear I just saw a Team Rocket member just there. We'll get to them, don't worry. <laughs> we need to heal after that bloody Doug Trio. Exactly. We had a rough time this episode with fights. We had that Doug Trio and we had the two bro arsehole brothers who kept using Horn Drill. Yeah. Why, well, yes, it has been a marvellous adventure. Oh, like, I think this... Oh, we can get Zippy Zap back. That's nice. Oh, that's cool. What's Floaty full? That's what I'm checking. Also, is that a lollipop he's holding? Yes, I think it is. It's flying? Oh, my God. <laughs> the user floats in the air, then dives at a steep angle to attack the target. So it's just better fly. Oh, we got to learn that. Wait, hang on, what's the accuracy on that? 95. 95 and hits him 90. Uh, Maybe get rid of Brick Break if we're going to be... Because we're still going to be using Shield all the time. Yeah, honestly, like, Brick Break... And I feel like we need... We need this move more because we have nothing to fight against fighting types. Yes. And this will finally be a move... And a strong move at that. Yeah. That coupled with the, uh, the Pikachu candies... I think our Pikachu's going to get a lot stronger. I, I kind of don't want to use the candies, if that makes sense. I feel like we kind of need to, because if we want Pikachu to be stronger, like, to match up for a Raichu. I'll tell you what, if we ever, like, get to a point where, like, I'm just getting wasted, I will use the candies. Nah, fair. Also, I'm assuming, you, yeah, it's an Alolan Sandshrew, which would be cool, but I'm not going to do that. I forgot we called our Sandshrew Planet. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Who thought of these names? Uh, don't. <laughs> that is not a good opener, lady. <laughs> 10,000 yen? No, I don't care what you're offering. Fuck that. I'm just going to look up what you do on Cerebi later. I was about to say. <laughs> I bet you it's not going to be worth it. Anyway, before we progress plot, let's go back to this trainer. What have you got? It's gonna be like a Dragonite or something. <laughs> Going back to the um, Nuzlocke comics again, I just remembered something else that was very frequent in a lot of them. I have never seen that name before in my life, but whatever. Uh, a very frequent part of these Nuzlocke comics was that uh, the Pokemon could actually talk. Oh, okay. Like, so it was either a case of where in this world Pokemon just spoke perfect English, which I always found a bit weird. But um, there was an original Pokemon manga that had the same thing. I think it was a Kefairy that could talk. Oh, I think I know it's about that. Super old that one is. Yeah, very old. But um, it was either that or only the protagonist could speak to Pokemon, and everyone else was just like, "Wait, you could speak to Pokemon." That's super useful. Are you the main character of a story? Yes, actually. Ah, oh, here's, a, here's a bit of a... I remember this one Nuzlocke comic I read. This one was really good, and it actually got completed. Like, the art was amazing, and actually had a pretty engaging story. I think it was written by a someone called Kainim, uh, and it was a Pokemon White Nuzlocke, I think. And it had a scene where... Because they fleshed out uh, N's whole bit uh, a lot more. Not to say that N wasn't like a good character to begin with, but they... Since obviously it's a fan comic, they did more with it. And they had a scene where 
This is either going to sound like really cool or really stupid to you, and I'm, I'm going to be curious to see what you think. N Go on. put himself in a Pokeball so that he could... I. Well, like, he just used it on himself. So he got turned it. He got, he got turned into like the little red light thing. Got put into the Pokeball, and then like he came out and he was like shaking and like I think I think he threw up or he like he nearly did, because like you know you're not meant to do that. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm not ha sure to feel about that. And, oh dear, Shield just got done in. I'm a bad trainer. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say use fruit. Fruit and Earthquake it. I probably could have. But it's too late now. It's okay, it's attrition time. So yeah, but it, too long didn't read. A lot of these Nuzlocke comics very much uh, made their stories... <coughs> sorry, made their stories much more adult and darker. Sometimes, like, extremely so. Like, the one I recommended is, like, pretty tame compared to some of the others that I've that I quickly looked at. At least that one sounds good. Not sure how I feel about the the end thing. I highly recommend that one. But yeah, once they're just, like, very clearly, like, oh, and everything's dark and horrible and just all of them die. It's like, oh, okay. That's not what I'm looking for in this, in my Pokemon. Yeah, it's... It, Nuzlocke comics, like, there's a lot of them, but, like, it takes a lot to make them really good. It takes a lot of effort. In fact, whilst my team is getting wasted by this goddamn Wigglytuff... <laughs> I think it's time for fruit. Did you ever hear of a... Just I just remembered this suddenly. This was years ago. Uh, it was a fan-made manga, I think. That was... I can't remember the exact title, but it was something like... I dated a team at Magma Grunt. Did you ever hear about this? Funny enough, I think I've actually heard of this. <laughs> yeah, because I read it. I don't know if it, they ever actually updated it. They only made like a few chapters, I think. It's honestly really sweet. Because uh, for context, uh, it's basically, it's after the events of the third generation of games. I think it was around the time Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out. And it was just all about uh, the, the male protagonist dating a team Magma Grunt. Aww. And it's actually kind of sweet. I mean, it's after the events of the game when they're like, oh yeah, this is not what we're supposed to be doing. And it's sort of like a, a sort of thing where this team Amagron was a little bit like, but like I was working for eco-terrorists, like why do you even like me? And it's, it's just like kind of sweet. One scene I vividly remember, I'm just going to share this before we end it off here, uh, was a bit where they run into like a team Aqua Grunt and she just starts shit talking the Magma Grunt. And so her boyfriend just like steps up and goes, I've got this. I challenge you to a Pokemon battle. And the Aqua Grunt's like, oh, okay, what are you going to do? And he just summons Groudon. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just cuts to after the fight. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, because he caught Groudon. Why would you pick a fight with him? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, you caught Groudon, didn't you? Oh, no. <laughs> You know what, let's see... Oh no, I thought, I thought a cutscene was going to trigger, but no, it's just this guy's just standing here. Yes, I know your Team Rocket. It's very easy to tell with the big R on your front. What do you think you're doing running around the place? You think criminals will try to be a bit more subtle, but regardless, I think we're going to call it there. Uh, I know, again, not much else happened, but honestly, like, I tried... Oh yeah, we've already gone over an hour, so... We, we were planning to do the tower, but that's not happening today. But next time, that means we can do the gym. We can do Celadon. Next time's going to be exciting because we shall be taking on the Celadon gym. And then after that, try to find Cubone. But until then, this is Michael Beckwith saying goodbye. This is James Hall saying goodbye. And we'll, we will see you next time. Goodbye. Whoa, 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 whoa. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>